Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Glory to thee, who has shone forth the light. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, goodwill among men. These are the words of the opening verse of the, of the doxology, which we chant just before the start of the divine liturgy of our Orthodox Church. <clears throat> Toward the end of the doxology, we chant another verse, focusing on the light that we are able, through faith, to experience as we grow together in the likeness of God. For with thee is the fountain of life. In thy light shall we see light. Throughout the liturgy, we have these references to light. On the Feast of the Transfiguration, we celebrate the great Feast of Light when our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ appears as He is forever. And His clothes, as the Gospel tells us, His clothes and His radiance shone like the sun. God is light. After, after we receive communion, at toward, toward the end of the liturgy, we, we receive communion, and while the priest is busy getting everything put together on the altar to, to come to a conclusion of the liturgy, why, why we chant that beautiful, beautiful refrain, we have seen the true light, we have seen the true light, we have seen it in what we have been doing, we have found the true faith in all of these beautiful, beautiful findings, seeing, <coughs> and at, as the very <coughs> priest comes out here and says the, uh, the prayer before the icon of Christ, we are reminded of the light that's been shown to us by our God. For all good giving and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from thee, the Father of lights. <coughs> Truly it can be said that our whole effort of denying ourselves and following Christ is for the purpose of moving out from the darkness of self-centeredness into the light of God's glory. We have seen the true light out of that glory. <coughs> and we, we come into this light in united communion with God and with each other. Today's scriptural readings are about light and about our walking in that light. In his epistle to the Ephesians, St. Paul urges us to walk as children of light. I think he means walk together as, as we try to do in our faith. Walk as children of light, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. He says in uh, verse 8 and 10, chapter 4. We certainly aren't going to find out what is acceptable to the Lord if we choose to stay in darkness. If we choose to <clears throat> say by our choices, if not with words, I don't want the light of Christ. I don't want that. I don't want that illumination that we talked about when 
when the priest or the bishop put criticism on our heads and said, you are illumined. You are literally lit up with the Holy Spirit. We don't want that. I don't. No, no, keep, it. keep it. And God, being a perfect gentleman, never argues about it. Never. Always accepts it. He still loves you. He loves you because he created you. He looked so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for you. And you can say no, because I have created you in my image and in my likeness. In my image, that's freedom of will. You're free. You can say yes or no. It's a limited freedom. You know, you don't have all kinds, of, but no, no, maybe uh, someday, no, no, it's yes or no. Let your yes be yes, your no, no. Now we are made candidates for this walk as children of light, as St. Paul urges us to do. We're, we're made candidates for this at our chrismation. Uh, chrismation is often referred to as illumination, the sacrament of illumination. That is enlightenment. Thou art illumined. By which we begin the walk as children of light for the rest of our life and into life everlasting, if we so choose. St. Paul assures us that we shall find out in the light of our walk, quote, that which is acceptable to the Lord. What the Lord wants of us. And as I said before, you can't see that in the darkness. You can't see anything in the darkness. And that's the point of, of the gospel, really, is it? Here we find in the gospel the physical blindness of the beggar. And of course, it's a metaphor. As much as the scripture is metaphoric, one thing is symbolizing another. A metaphor for spiritual blindness. We all walk in that. We're all blind men in that sense until we start and continue this walk as children of God. Just as the blind man is experiencing physical blindness, so we experience spiritual darkness, if we choose not to seek healing. The Lord asks the blind man, what do you want me to do for you? And his response is, Lord, that I may receive my sight. In answering this prayer, our Lord, as usual, when healing physical sicknesses, reminds the petitioner that your faith has made you well. You thought you were going to get by without it, and much reference to faith, but I'm still pretty alert about what it says in the scriptures. <laughs> Your faith has made you well. And so we go from the realm of, of the physical wellness to the realm of what your faith does for you. It not only heals your aches and pains, and it does a lot of that, by the way. But the aches and pains aren't forever, but your soul is forever. And the aches and pains of your soul, when they're forgiven through faith, are healed. Your faith has made you well. Well and whole are derived from the same root word, well and whole. Holistic, holy. Your physical eyesight is indeed important. I'm not saying it isn't. Without it, what would we do? But your spiritual eyesight is for everlasting life, not simply for the sights of this world. 
We get we get that image at least of the blind man when he when he's Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And when he says later, Lord, that I may see, uh, the blind man talks to Jesus in the words of, of his divinity, son of David, the, the Messiah who is to come from the lineage of Lord, Dominus. This is this is a, a word means Lord God. We speak of Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord God and Savior. Lord, that I may say. But your spiritual darkness also is dispelled if you keep the faith that has made you well and your walk as a child of light is for eternity as the light more and more illuminates for you what is acceptable to the Lord as you grow in the spiritual life. Theosis becoming as St. Peter says in his epistle you become uh, partakers, partakers of the divine nature. You don't become the divine nature, but you become part, partakers of it through the grace of God, which is the energy of God, which is forever and which is forever yours. To him who shows us the light and guides us in walking as children of light, Christ our true God, be all glory, honor, and worship, together with his Father, who is from everlasting, and his all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. <laughs>